the Joe Rogan experience. That's what I was kind of getting out. Are you concerned at all with artificial life? Are you concerned about the propagation of, of artificial intelligence? Well, there are different kinds of artificial life. So um, one is artificial intelligence. And I know people like Elon Musk and, and late Stephen Hawking are, are afraid. Terrified. Yeah. And I think that the, we need, whether it's right or not, I think it's great for us to focus on those risks. Because if we just say, oh, that's, that's crazy, mm -hmm. and we don't focus on it, it increases the likelihood of these bad things happening. So kudos to, to Elon Musk. But I also think that we are, we're a, a long way away from that threat. And we, are, and we will be enormous beneficiaries of these technologies. And that's why, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but that's why I keep saying it's all about values. If, I think we should take those threats very seriously. And then values say, are so abstract and we don't agree on them. No, it's true, but like, like Elon Musk, I mean, they've set up this, this institute where to say, well, what are the dangers? Right. And then what are the things that we can do now? What are standards that we can integrate, for example, into our computer programming? And, and so I mentioned my World Health Organization uh, committee. The question is, well, what are, the, what are the standards that we can integrate into scientific culture it's not going to cure everything, but it may increase the likelihood we'll have a better rather than worse outcome. But isn't there an inherent danger in other companies or other countries rather not complying with any standards that we set because they yes. would be anti-competitive? Yes. Like that would, that would, they would somehow or another diminish com competition or yeah. diminish their competitive yeah. edge. Yes, it's true. And that's why, and that's the balance that we're, we're going to need to need to hold. Oof. It's, and it's really hard, but we have a window of opportunity now to try to get ahead of that. And like I said, we have chemical weapons, biological weapons, nuclear weapons, where we've had international standards that have roughly held. I mean, there was a time when slavery was the norm and there was a movement to say, hey, this is, this is wrong. And it was largely successful. So we have history of being more successful rather than, uh, than less. And I think that's the goal, but you're, you're right. I mean, this is a race yeah. between the technology and the best values. My real concern about artificial intelligence is that this paradigm shifting moment will happen before we recognize it's happening yes. and then it'll be too late. Yes, that's exactly right. And that's, like I was saying, that's, that's why I've written the book. That's why I'm out on the road so much talking to people, why, why it's such an honor for me to be and pleasure for me to be here with you talking about it because we have to reach out uh, to people yeah. and people can't be afraid of entering this conversation because it feels too technical or it feels like it's somebody else's business. This is all of our business because this is all of our lives and it's all of our futures. So if in the future you think 20 years, the thing that's going to really change the most is predictive genetics and yeah. to, be able to be able to right. predict accurately a person's right. health, what do you health think- Health and life. Health and life. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the biggest detriment for all this stuff and the thing that we have to avoid the most. Yeah. So one is, as I mentioned, this determinism, just because if we just kind of take our sense of wonder about what it means to be a, a human away, mm -hmm. like that's really going to, to harm us. We talked about equity uh, and access to these technologies and, and the technologies don't even need to be real in order to have a negative Im uh, uh, impact. So in India, there are no significant genetic differences between people in different castes, but the caste system has been maintained mm. for thousands of years because people just have accepted these, uh, these differences. So this, it's a whole new way of, of understanding what is a human and it's really going to be complicated and we aren't ready for it. We aren't ready for it culturally. We aren't ready for it educationally. Certainly our political leaders aren't paying much of any attention to all of this. We have a huge job. Oof. Oof. So, when you sit down and you give this speech to Congress, yeah, what what are you anticipating from them in terms of like what do you think that there's anything that they can do now to yeah, absolutely. take certain steps? Yes, so a few things. One is we need to have a national education campaign. I mean, this is so important. I would say it's on the future of genetics revolution and of AI because I think we it's just it's it's crazy um, that we aren't focusing on these. Like I, I learned French in, in, um, in grade school and high school, and I'm happy to speak French, but I would rather have people say, this is really important stuff. So that's, uh, that's number one. Number two um, is we need to make sure that we have a functioning regulatory system in, in this country, in every country. And I do a lot of, of comparative work and like the United Kingdom, they're really well organized. They have a national healthcare system, which allows them at a national level 
to kind of think about long-term care and the and trade-offs. In this country, the average person changes health plans every 18 months. And I was talking with somebody the other night and they were, they were working on a, a predictive health company. And they said their first idea was they were gonna sell this information um, to uh, health insurers because like, wouldn't this be great if you could help, if you're a health insurer and you, could, you had somebody who was your client and you could say, hey, here's some information, you can live healthier and you're not gonna have this disease 20 years from now. And what he found out is the health insurers, they could have cared less because people were just, they were only gonna be part of it for a year and a half. So we really need to think differently about how do we invest in people over the course of their lives. And certainly education is one, but thinking long-term about health and well-being is another. 